Every differentiation rule yields a rule for integration. The integration by parts rule says that integral of the expression u times dv equals uv minus integral of v du. Complicated functions which can be expressed in the form u times dv can be integrated by this formula if the function v times du is simpler to integrate than the original u times dv. This formula follows from the product rule for differentiation. The product rule says that the derivative of a product of functions f and g is the derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. From this, we may solve f times the derivative of g, and we get that fx times g prime of x is d dx of the product f at x times g at x minus f prime at x times gx. By integrating the formula that we just obtained, namely the formula that says that f at x times g prime at x equals d dx f of x gx minus f prime at x gx, we get that um, integral of f of x times g prime at x dx equals integral of d dx f of x times g of x dx minus integral of f prime of x gx dx. This formula simplifies because integral of the function d dx f at x times g of x dx is simply f at x times g of x. Then we just integrate the derivative of the product f at x times g of x. And therefore, this simplifies to the integration by parts formula, which is integral of f of x times g prime of x dx equals f of x times g of x minus integral of f prime of x times gx dx. This is often abbreviated in the form integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du, where we abbreviated u equals f of x, du is then f prime of x dx, and dv is g prime of x dx, and v is g of x. In this example, we use the integration by parts formula, namely the formula that integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du, to compute the integral of x times sine of x dx. The goal in using this formula is to choose u so that the integral of v du that remains on the right hand side is simpler than the original integral of u dv. In this particular example, it is almost obvious what we need to do. Namely, we choose u to be x. Then dv is what remains. dv is sine of x dx. If u is x, then du is dx, and v is negative of cosine of x. And then we simply plug these values into the formula. We get integral of x times sine of x dx, is uv, that is x times negative of cosine. So that uh, is written here as minus x times cosine of x. And then we have minus integral of v du. du is dx, v is negative of x. So we get minus integral of minus cosine of x dx. Now this minus integral of minus cosine of x dx amounts to integral of cosine of x and that is simply sine of x. So we get that the answer is integral of x times sine of x dx is negative of x times cosine of x plus sine of x plus the constant of integration c. We can use the integration by parts formula integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du to compute the integral of arc sine of x dx. In this particular problem, the integrand, the function to be integrated, is arc sine of x. 
It is not a product in any obvious way. So we choose u to be x sine of x. When we do that, then du is dx divided by square root of 1 minus x squared, and dv is dx, therefore v equals x. And we get by the integration by parts formula, integral of x sine of x dx equals x times x sine of x minus integral of x dx divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. This latter integral still needs to be computed by a substitution. So we substitute u equals 1 minus x squared, then du is minus 2 times x dx, so x dx is minus 1 half du, and we get that integral of x dx divided by square root of 1 minus x squared is integral of minus du over 2 divided by square root of u. Now this is simple to compute. We first rewrite this in the form minus 1 half integral of u to the power negative 1 half du, and then we observe that this is simply minus u to the power 1 half plus the constant of integration c. So we conclude that the integral of x dx divided by square root of 1 minus x squared is minus u to the power 1 half, that is minus square root of u, plus constant of integration. Now u was 1 minus x squared, so the answer is that integral of x dx divided by square root of 1 minus x squared is negative of square root of 1 minus x squared plus constant of integration. We plug that in into the formula that we previously obtained for arc sine for its integral, and we get that integral of arc sine of x dx is x times arc sine of x plus square root of 1 minus x squared plus the constant of integration c. This example is slightly more complicated than the previous examples. We use the integration by parts formula, integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of v du to compute the integral of e to the x times sine of x dx. Here we first choose u to be e to the power x, then dv is sine of x dx, and du is e to the power x dx, and v is negative of cosine of x. We apply the integration by parts formula, we get integral of e to the x sine of x dx is uv that is e to the x times negative of cosine of x. So we have minus e to the x times cosine of x minus integral of v du, so minus integral of negative of cosine of x times e to the power x dx. This simplifies to minus e to the power x cosine of x plus integral of cosine of x e to the power x dx. So we got that integral of e to the power x sine of x dx is minus e to the power x times cosine of x plus integral of cosine of x e to the power x dx. And now we might think that we are at loss because this integral cosine of x e to the power x dx is not any simpler than the original integral. But we don't mind. We persist and we perform integration by parts again. So next we compute integral of cosine of x e to the power x dx, and we do integration by parts. We choose u equals e to the power x, dv equals cosine of x dx, and then du is e to the power x dx, v equals sine of x. We get that integral of e to the power x cosine of x dx equals e to the power x sine of x minus integral of sine of x e to the power x dx. We are now in similar situation as before, but there is a way out. Namely, we have now obtained that integral of e to the x sine of x dx equals minus e to the x cosine of x plus integral of cosine of x e to the power x dx, and then on the other hand we computed that integral of e to the x cosine of x dx equals e to the x sine of x minus integral of sine of x e to the x dx. Now we substitute the second equation to the first one. So in place of integral of cosine of x e to the x dx, 
In the first equation on the right hand side, we write e to the x sin of x minus integral of sin of x e to the x dx. So combining these two, we get integral of e to the x sin of x dx equals negative e to the x times cosine of x plus e to the x sin of x minus integral of sin of x e to the power x dx. And now we have an equation. We may solve integral of sin of x e to the power x dx from this equation. Solving is easy. We simply move the integral of sin of x e to the x dx from the right hand side to the left hand side and then we get that 2 times integral of e to the x sin of x dx is minus e to the x cosine of x plus e to the x sin of x. And this means that the integral of e to the x sin of x dx is e to the x over 2 times sin of x minus cosine of x plus the constant of integration. To summarize, the integration by parts formula was integral of u dv equals uv minus integral of b du. There are two different ways of using this formula. The first one is that we may be able to find u in such a way that the integral of v du is simpler and perhaps immediate to compute. If we manage to do that, then the integration is done. The other way of using this formula is to derive an equation for the integral of u dv and then solve the integral of u dv from that equation. That was the last example in which we had to perform integration by parts twice to get an equation from which the original integral could be solved.